restored the fortunes of Zion, it was like a dream. Then our mouths were filled with laughter and shouts of joy. Then it was said among the nations, the Lord has done great things for them. The Lord has done great things for us, and we rejoice. Let those who plant with tears reap the harvest with joy. Let those who are weeping come home with shouts of joy. Our first hymn this morning is hymn number 621 uh, from the 1980s, and we will sing through it twice. Yeah. 
Hayden Church District. Some soon after our ch church was celebrated its their centennial in 1874, the cities enrolled in. And many cities planted earlier bore fruit during the 1980s. Reverend Wayne Hurstead was a pastor, and he had $27,000 was his salary. <laughs> uh, attendance, active attendance, was 178 active members and 12 deacons, elders, excuse me, elders. We had a large number of young families with children, and Sunday school was held in the Christian Ed building for infants through adults. The average attendance was 100, and youth groups were very active and met different days of the week. The organist was Mary Higgins, and she made a salary of 540 a year. The choir, <laughs> the choir wore robes for Sunday services. The Christian Head Building had been designed especially to serve community groups. On weekdays, groups such as AA, al -Anon, Girl Scouts, Boy Scouts, and Crewman Community Chorus, and a local preschool caused held classes, meetings, and practices in the building. Each Christmas, Jerry Laughlin would lead a group of churchmen to go out and cut Christmas trees. Typically, two very large trees were, would liven up the sanctuary, decorated with red chili, satin chili peppers made by the women. He was a retired army chaplain 
who had served in Vietnam. On one communion Sunday, he surprised the entire congregation when he doffed his robe and was decked out in full battle gear. He served entire served communion from his battlefield kit. Another tale about John was a homeless man wandered into his office and said he was cold. John took off his long underwear and gave it to the homeless man, saying it's already warmed up for me. <laughs> Since this is a I'd like to talk about another pledge drive. The theme was the Pony Express. And one Sunday afternoon, two fully dressed cowboys came knocking at our door. The cowboys were two elders, Enos Garcia and Celestino Romero. They came told us just put our pledge cards in the saddlebags and they would be on their way. <laughs> no one was going to say no to that. <laughs> they collected 50%, $43,000, $43, which was 50% more than the year before. So maybe that was all worth fun. <laughs> <laughs> adjusted the salaries a little bit better, more proportionately, but maybe we should do the uh, saddlebag again with the bunch of cards. Oh, friends, grace and peace to you, and welcome to First Presbyterian Church of Taos. We are glad that you're here and made it out on this rainy day. Um, we, as we're here, we bring, bring greetings, connecting those in the room with those on Zoom. Uh, so we see Jim and Colleen Melton, Amy Jo and Colin. And I think Carol and assorted others over there. I can't tell who else is in there, but we're glad you're here. It might even be the kids and grandkids. Uh, friends, we are so glad that y'all are here. And are there any newcomers or visitors? It's not required, but if you'd like, we'd love to be able to greet you by name. Um, anyone who'd like to say who they are and where they're coming from? Yeah, let me bring you the mic so that the all liners can hear. Um, but yes, my name is James, and I'm from uh, Albuquerque. I'm new to the area, but uh, you know, I plan on keeping up, like, continually coming to your services. And I'm grateful you guys are here, and I'm looking forward to uh, being here today. Thank you, James. Thank you. All right. Announcements can be found on the back of your bulletin. Are there any folks would like to lift up? Mark, do you want to introduce these lovely people? We have a um, special guest today, Julie uh, Morong Poyla and Kim McKee. McKee. And they're, they're playing for the service this morning, but this afternoon with Kim's uh, husband, Ken McKee, they're going to have a whole concert here at 3 o'clock. So, Welcome, and it's, it's such a pleasure to have this music again. And we'll be with you this afternoon. So thank you. Well, come on out. <laughs> thank you, guys. Any other announcements? I will, then I will wave these pretty green forms at you and say, remember, they're due by the end of October. And oh, we want you to come to our 150th anniversary party. And oh, we want you to have food. So if you haven't filled one out yet, fill it out. If you can't remember if you've done, you want, you want one? All right. <laughs> I think your mom's already filled one out. Um, but you can make it to a paper airplane if you want. And if you, uh, if you can't remember if you've signed up or not, or if you've paid or not, uh, talk to Hey Juan. She can sort you guys out. So I'll have these with me. Come talk to me. We'd love you to come. 
If there's no other announcements, then I invite the kids to come forward for a moment on the steps. All right, let's say our names since you've got someone new. My name is Jenna. Joshua Gideon. Joshua and Gideon. So glad y'all are here. What's something exciting that happened for you guys this week? Um, we had all week off with our dad. All week off with your dad? Mm -hmm. That's because fall break, right? Mm -hmm. Oh, what'd you guys do? Um, we helped him a lot and we played our game mile from the week. Yeah. Well, oh, we, you helped him a lot, and then you played Mario from the Wii. Yeah, Do you play, yeah. is it Mario Brothers or Mario Kart? Or? No, it's Mario Kart. Mario Kart? No. no. That's what the cars are going on. Okay. Oh, that's okay. We don't have that yet, he says. That's good. I like the way you think. Oh, but why you ask what game you are from? We wanted to play Wii Sport Resort. I will down the line. It would be cool. Wii Sport Resort. That sounds pretty cool. Yeah, so you guys have had a fun week. Hey. Uh-huh. Are you excited to go back to school? Yeah. Yeah. Tomorrow we're going back. Tomorrow you're going back. See your friends. Yeah. That's good. That's really good. Well, we are still talking because we're getting close to our 150th birthday party. We're still talking about planting seeds. You guys have planted some seeds at this church, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Where'd you plant seeds? Right back there. Uh-huh. Back there for Vacation Bible School. Mm -hmm. Have you looked to see if they're growing? No, not yet. Well, with all this rain, I bet maybe, maybe they're, they're sprouting and you put some flowers in there, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think they're still alive, which is really a miracle. That may have to do with people coming by and watering them. Yeah. So, this church has celebrated its 150th birthday party. That's pretty old, huh? Mm -hmm. Do you know anyone who's 150? <laughs> yes. No. Yes? Who? Uh, <laughs> my friend's grandpa. Your friend's grandpa? <laughs> That is impressive. Wow. <laughs> grandpa's, his grandpa's grandpa. That does, that makes sense. Well, what's cool is that no one here was alive when the church was founded because we're not 150, right? So we're celebrating a birthday party that really other people made this all happen. And so what we're doing as we celebrate the birthday is trying to say thank you to those people who made this happen. And thank you to God for making it happen. Yep. Yep. All right. Couldn't say it better myself. I'll let you guys go off to Sunday school with Miss Tina and, who's, and, and Mr. Jack. Excellent. Oh, that's a, good, that's a good team. But what is it we always say? The congregation says, may God, God be with you there. And we say, God, God with you here. Perfect. Now you can go. O Lord, in light of the Son's salvation, let these words of Scripture live not only in our mouths, but in our hearts, that we will embody your truth and confess with our lives that Jesus is Lord. Amen. The Old Testament reading this morning uh, is from Isaiah, chapter 43, verses 16 through 21, and it can be found on page 672 of the Pew Bible, if you want to follow along. This is what the Lord says. He who made a way through the sea, a path through the mighty waters, who drew out the chariots and horses and army and reinforcements together, and they lay there never to rise again, extinguished, snuffed out like a wick. Forget the former things, do not dwell in the past. See, I am doing a new thing, now it springs up, do you not perceive it? I am making a way in the wilderness and streams in the wasteland. The animals honor me, the jackals and the owls, because I provide water in the wilderness and streams in the wasteland. Give drink to my people, my chosen, the people I formed for myself, that they may proclaim my praise. The word of our God. Thanks be to God. The psalm reading this morning is on page 572, psalm number 126, a song of ascents. When the Lord restored the fortunes of Zion, 
We were like those who dreamed. Our mouths were filled with laughter, our tongues songs of joy. Then it was said among the nations, the Lord has done great things for them. The Lord has done great things for us, and we are filled with joy. Restore our fortunes, Lord, like streams in the Negev. Those who sow with tears will reap with songs of joy. Those who go out weeping, carrying seeds to sow, will return with songs of joy, carrying sheaves with them. The word of our God. Thanks be to God.
Will you pray with me? May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts be acceptable to you, O God, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Amen. It's not often that I get to preach from the Psalms. Psalms are beautiful. They are music, they are poetry. But poetry can be a little esoteric, a little hard to wrap our heads around. So in the end, I end up usually choosing the gospel reading because the gospel is a story. But the Psalms tell a story too. And this morning's Psalm, Psalm 126, tells a story about sowing seeds in tears and reaping a harvest in joy. The backdrop to Psalm 126 is the Hebrew people's joyful return home to Jerusalem after the Babylonian exile. Quick refresher in case anyone missed that day of Sunday school. In 586 BCE, after God's people Israel had lived for centuries as their own sovereign nation, King Nebuchadnezzar of Babylon conquered Jerusalem, burned the city, destroyed the temple, and carried the people away into captivity in Babylon. And for a whole generation, 47 years, the Hebrews lived in exile. Strangers in a strange land. Longing and crying out for home and feeling like they had been abandoned by their God. The Babylonian exile is the foundational trauma of the Old Testament. They're a nation in ruins. A people in despair. Tears are their constant companion. All hope seems lost. And then, things changed. A new empire arose, the Persian Empire, and King Cyrus of Persia, when he conquered Babylon, let the people of Israel go back home. It was the great reversal, the thing that was too good to hope for. When the Lord restored the fortunes of Zion, the psalmist writes, we were like those who then our mouth was filled with laughter, and our tongue with shouts of joy. The people who, for 47 years, sowed their seeds with tears, came home with joy, carrying their sheaves with them. Now when the psalmist is writing, though, Psalm 126, all of that is in the past. God has brought the people home, restored the fortunes of Israel, turned weeping into shouts of joy. That's verses 1 through 3. But in verse 4, the psalmist shifts into the present. Restore now our fortunes, O Lord. You who came to our aid once, now do it again. We don't know. What is going on in the life of the psalmist or the life of the nation when this psalm is written? We don't know what inspired these present tears. What we do know, though, is that because God has been faithful in the past to God's people, the psalmist is bold enough to call upon God to be faithful once again. The psalmist engages in the sacred practice of remembering. Remembering God's faithfulness in the past and so drawing it into the present. We are sowing seeds, O Lord, and we are weeping as we do. Oh, that you would come again and turn our tears into a harvest. Of joy. Recent experience has taught me a thing or two about sowing seeds in tears. 
For the last 18 months, I've been seeking to start a family, sowing a slightly different kind of seed. And friends, here is what I learned. It is a vulnerable thing to do, to sow a seed. To invest yourself in the possibility of new life. To pour the whole of your heart and soul into something that may or may not ever take root. It is absolutely terrifying. No wonder the psalmist tells us that those who go out to sow go out weeping. Sowing a seed can break your heart. All your dreams and hopes and prayers and labor, it can be in vain. And yet, there is the possibility that it all just might work. And so, we dare to keep sowing seeds. You've been there before too, haven't you? Maybe you're there right now, investing your whole self in a hope that may never come to pass, praying through tears for the job, the healing, the family, the reconciliation, the outcome that, well, you don't actually know if it's even possible. You too have poured your heart and your soul, your labor and your strength into a hope prayer, a seed, haven't you? This is the story of the ministry that we do here together. We try something new, a relationship with Enos Garcia Elementary School or an emergency winter homeless shelter in the back building, knowing full well, even as we do, that it might fail. We take risks, leaps of faith. Not every seed planted will bear fruit. We do not know if or when or how God will show up. But we remember that God has shown up before. So we keep on planting seeds. This is... The story of stewardship season. We invest quite literally in a future that we may or may not ever get to see. We put our money into God's project in the hope that it will come true. It's a vulnerable thing to do, sowing a seed starting a capital campaign, applying for a grant. In fact, when Carol gets back into town, you can ask her just how many tears I personally shed during the whole grant writing process. <laughs> and still we sow these seeds, praying that one day they just might bear Like the psalmist, we sow seeds even when we sow in tears. Because like the psalmist, like the whole Hebrew people, we engage in that sacred practice of remembering. We remember how God has been faithful in the past. And so we, First Presbyterian Church of Taos, call on God to be faithful again. During this anniversary season, we've been telling the stories of our congregation, of God's faithfulness to seeds planted in generations past. Stories of Padre Antonio Martinez, who primed the soil for Presbyterians in Taos, of James and Martha Roberts, who founded this church, of Mary Pyle, who secured the funding for the mission school, of the Brandenburgs and John Balmeen who built this building, of Porfirio Romero who founded La Higarita Cluster and Camp Loma Verde, of Raymond Kirsting and John Snyder 
and so many others who engaged in mission and outreach and made this church a central force for good in the life of our Taos community. For 150 years, the people in this church have sown seeds in good times and in bad, in laughter and in tears, never knowing when or what they would reap. In trusting the future and the seeds they planted to God, risking vulnerability, taking a leap of faith. And we, we have been the ones to reap their harvest. We have come home with shouts of joy, carrying their sheaves. Now it's our turn. Our turn to take the leap of faith, to be courageous and vulnerable enough to sow some seeds. To trust in God's faithfulness, to do great, great things with those seeds, even the seeds sown in tears. In verse 4, when the psalmist shifts from the past to the present, they call on God to uh, send down rain. Rain like water courses in the Negev to water those seeds that the people have tearfully planted. And do you know what God does? God waters those seeds. Not with rain, but with tears. God transforms the people's weeping itself into the life-giving water that makes lush and fertile a bone-dry desert and brings a harvest of joy. God does not deny or look away from our tears. No, instead, God takes them, our sadness, our vulnerability, and redeems it. God turns those very tears into a blessing. Nurturing the seeds we've planted in hope of future joy. For God is faithful in times of joy and in times of tears. Sowing seeds is such a vulnerable thing to do. Yet here we are. Let's do it anyway. Amen. Friends, I invite you to rise in body or spirit and join in hymn number 74, When God Restored Our Common Plan.
own love and tears. So share the peace of Christ that has been shared with you with one another. May the peace of the risen Christ be with you. And also with you. Share signs of peace with your neighbors. to Jim and Colleen and Amy, Joe, and Colin, and I saw Jim and Sandy Irby on Facebook, and it was a different Carol. It was not Carol White, it was Carol and Marcus, who has come with us and been in the wheelchair and sung so well with us. So we send peace to Carol and Marcus. Having shared Christ's peace, let us now come before God in prayer. Great and loving God, you restore goodness in a world when things seem broken. You bring light in the darkness. You bring love and joy in the midst of tears. So we come to you with our tears and our joy and everything in between. We pray for your creation. We thank you for the watering of rain in this desert, even as we remember those in Florida, North Carolina, Virginia, Tennessee, suffering in the aftermath of hurricanes. We pray for your church in every time and place, for this church and this time and the work ahead of us, and for all places where people of faith seek to serve you. We pray for the world, for leaders in all nations, that they would seek your justice, compassion, and peace. We pray for this nation in a time of utter anxiety and division as we head toward a deeply contentious election. May your love and peace and kindness prevail. God, we pray for our Taos community, for those who are hungry or homeless, for people who are sick or in prison, for folks in the hospital or recovering from procedures, for immigrants, for refugees, for all who are living in fear or grief. May we all know your healing, saving love. And now, O oh God, in silence and aloud, we lift up those particular joys and sorrows on our hearts this morning. Friends, for whom and for what do we pray today? Pray for Stacy and Gilbert's friend Judy, dealing with conflict and joy for her arrival here in Taos. God in your mercy.
praying for an end to the bombing in Gaza and Lebanon, for an end to all war and genocide. God, in your mercy. A joy for your new moderator ship of the Presbyterians. <laughs> I think you would have the strength to do a wonderful job. Thank you. Thank you. Prayers of Thanksgiving for a great meeting of the Presbyterian of Santa Fe yesterday at First Presbyterian Farmington uh, and the chance to be installed as moderator. Um, and uh, I'll add to that a prayer of Thanksgiving for that church, for First Pres Farmington, um, a church that's been rent by conflict mostly over gay stuff and is now finding its home with their new gay minister. It's beautiful. It's beautiful. God in your mercy. Prayers for our for our neighbors in Roswell, New Mexico, who are facing the floods, and our other neighbors in our local Burnside area, who are also facing mudslides. Prayers for neighbors in Roswell and in the Burn Scar facing floods. And also prayers for those uh, in Wyoming and along the Continental Divide facing fires. God, in your mercy. Amen. We lift up all of these things, O oh God, words spoken and words unspoken. In the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who taught us to pray, saying, Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. Friends, as we get ready to uh, receive the morning offering this morning, I invite Diana Jacobs up to give us a minute for stewardship. like a small business 
We need money for month monthly operating expenses. Um, and we have the capital program, which we've all heard about, that is there to care for this beautiful old building, which is in serious need of basic maintenance. So the truth is, the church really needs all three of those aspects from you. Your time, your talents, your money. And as we approach Commitment Sunday next week, I'd like you to think seriously about all three of these gifts from God. Our time, our talents, and our financial ability. And decide how you want to use each of them wisely and generously. Thank you. Thank you, Diane. God has given us so much. Let us take a moment to give back to God as we receive the morning offering. <laughs>
Go forth from this place to sow seeds of kindness and justice and peace. Go forth from this place to love and serve God by loving and serving one another. And as you go, may joy and nothing less guide you on the way. May you be blessed and oh, may you be a blessing. And may light, love's own crucified and risen light guide you and countless others all the way home. Amen. Amen.